Hi, I'm Cody Henriksen, and today we're going to be taking a look again at how we can do some designs or documentation for our projects that we do. And we're going to use a tool called UML, or a language called UML, Unified Modeling Language. And it's a way we can actually show and work with um, a design idea, so we can take a look at how we can actually organize our projects themselves, and see how they can relate to each other and work for that. As you can see right here, I'm working inside Umlet, the actual application that works on a Windows, Mac, or Linux box, just using the .jar file directly from that. You can also access and create your UML diagram by using um, online tools like Umlatino, which is just Umlet but on the web, or diagrams.net. And so if you have any concerns about using uh, something with like a login or something like that, like say your school or your district does not allow you to do that, you can see right here in diagrams.net, you can just save it directly to your device, no logins required. And then in Umlatino, there's no login at all. You simply just click on the link right here. It uses JavaScript, starts it up, and we go from there. Um, the tool itself works pretty well. You just double click on things and make it happen. But let's go ahead and we'll start to see how we can make this happen and go from it. And I'll use the uh, built-in desktop tool. As you can see, I'm in my desktop application right here. I've got a new diagram, which is what I start off with. Um, you have your generic colors right here. You have your UML common elements that we uh, could look on. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different pieces right here. To get any of the components, all you have to do is just double click on it over here in the right-hand section inside the drop-down area so I can get whatever different thing I'm looking for. I can just double click on the pieces. We'll go to common elements. When I double click on it, as you can see, it just shows up over here. I can click on it, I can drag it out, I can make it a little bit bigger. As you can see right here, now it has a simple class right here. And you can notice over here in the properties section that it has simple class right there as well. And so right here, this is how we're gonna be editing all of our um, UML diagrams and documents so we can put them together. And so a simple class right here, all I have to do is just uh, double click on this and I can give it a better name. And so we'll do debug duck because that's what we've been working with for all of my design projects so far. So that's the class name. To make a, nut, a line or a separator, we just do two minus signs or dashes in a row. Gives us a minus sign. And then we do another minus sign to go down below that so we can another section. You want to make three sections inside each of your objects that you're making. The top section, of course, is for the class. That's what we're going to be talking about right now. The middle section is where I put my data members, my fields, my instance variables, whatever you want to call that. The things that are make up or are describing that object itself. And then the bottom section is where we put our constructors and our methods. So when we're doing this, we can do this even before we actually write code. This is actually a great way we can actually design out some information, like saying, oh, I know what I need to make or I want to plan it out. And this is a great way. You can do this on paper as well, just to put something together like, hey, this is what I want to make to put something together to design a project when I want to solve a problem. And so you can use this UML diagram to actually create something before you even get started. It's also helpful after the fact. Say, for example, your teacher gives you a UML diagram. You can look at that UML diagram and use that to build out all the stubs and all the relationship stuff so you can actually get ready to go. It's a great way to actually use something to start off with a project like that. Especially, say, for example, maybe you're working in an FRQ. You can see this diagram and see the pieces that need to go along with that. So it's a really powerful tool to look at how you can either design from the beginning, look at that, and then build your own software from there, or you can use it to keep track of information as well. If we look at our debug duck uh, project from earlier, you can see I have all my methods I've done so far right now. I've got my three different constructors. I've got all of my data members. And I can use that to actually put that together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure I get all my things for my debug duck, put it inside my diagram right here so I can see how it's put together. I can design it. And we can see how I could build that relationship and see what's going to happen from there. So I have a name, a color, question answered, and has answer as my data members. So to do that, I'm going to go over here. I click on the box again. And inside the middle section, that's where the data members go. And when we're talking data members, every data member is private. So I automatically start with a single minus sign. And then we'll do a space. And then we'll go ahead and do name and then colon. And then string, because it says the visibility of the data member we're looking at. And all data members, of course, are private. makes it really easy. Then we have the variable name. In this case, it is name. That's OK, cool. Then a colon, and then it's data type. And we're going to do that for each of the different data types that exist in there. And it doesn't matter the order on here. So questions answered. And then has answer. And what's the other one? Color. Oh, yes, color. Can't forget the color. So we now have each of our data members are inside there. You can see right there really quickly they're all private because of the minus sign. It has the name, colon, and its type. And it's just a quick way to organize that right there. So if I were to give you that as a student, as a teacher, oh, I have to make a debug.class. It has these data members inside it. It has the, what have the visibility for each data member, the name of the data member, and, its visit, and the return type or the type of variable that it is. I can make the framework for that right now. Then I go ahead and I put the constructors in there. So I have my default constructor, which is, a, of course, public. And that's a debug duck with no parens. I also have a debug duck. that takes a string parameter. And I have a debug duck that takes two string parameters. 
not starting. And so as you can see right here, when I'm talking about my constructors, I simply just give the parameter types that go inside the parens, not the actual names of that, because when I'm actually putting this together, this is just to get the framework for it. I can always do a refactor or design later to actually explain what I better want to have those variable names be said. But when I'm talking about the design and seeing what the information I need to go to actually put something together, all I'm looking for in the design is what kinds of information need to go in there. Because this is not designed to actually write the code for us, but more to give us an idea of what we're using. It's more of a planning document. And so I have that right there. And so again, I've got three constructors. It's the constructor we can know automatically because it's the same name as the class right here as we have up here. Nice way to know that as well. I can also add a colon after this and just simply just write constructor for that. If I want to, I can write colon constructor to explicitly call that out. That part is not quite as required, especially because it has the same name as the thing and it doesn't have a return type. It's really quite easy to understand that that is going to be the constructor. So that's a great thing to put right there for that. Let's just leave it with the name of that. We can have it built right there. Then we have our data members. We have our getters and setters. Now, with, excuse me, the next thing we have inside are our methods for getters and setters. Now, I don't like to write all the getters and setters out inside my, um, inside my email diagrams. I mean, you can. You can write every single one out. But... Because getters and setters are so standard and so basic, when I put my getters and setters in here, all I do is I do get parens, and then a slash, and then set, and then dot, 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 parens. And we know exactly what they are. So these are going to be a combination of void, of type, or void. Because all the getters return a type, all the setters return void. Makes that really easy. And then we do know we have for sure a public to string method. It takes no parameters and that returns a string. And so I can see this right here, this quick little thing that I can use to actually see how my class is designed or structured. And I can make this in advance. So when I'm doing, say, for example, a brainstorming session or if I'm talking about how I can plan for this, this is a great tool I could use to simply just put something together. And then from here, I could easily get the framework to put this code together, not knowing what goes inside it, but simply like, oh, here's all the stubs. I have to have a stub for each of those data member getters. I have to have a stub for each of those data member setters. And I do have to have a two-string method because we really should have a two-string method. But all I have to do to make that happen is I can just do this quick design right here. I could have that given to me as a student and I can know what I need to put together for it. Or I can develop this with my peers in my class and I can get something happening with that. So it's a great way you can use to design stuff. You can also use these um, UML diagrams to show more complex relationships between your project components. And we'll talk about that in some later videos, but you can use this to do some really cool stuff as well. But that's just a quick way you can use UML to talk about how you can design a project and use it to have a planning or, refer or reference component you can use for that. And so we can go from there. One more thing before I forget, you wanna make sure you can be able to uh, use this uh, very effectively. So this diagram right here is a UXF file, but if I wanted to go ahead and put this inside my project, I'll go to my dev folder, I'm gonna to go to my Java folder inside it, and I'm gonna to go to my uh, design demo where my debug docs are. That way it just saves it right inside there for me. And I don't wanna give it a name of new, that's not very helpful. And so this is the debug doc diagram. So I can come back and re-edit that if I want to. But what makes this really cool is I can just right click on this right here, go to export as, and I can export this as a PNG, and debug duck diagram PNG, and now have a, a size PNG that fits that directly. So I can just make a picture of this and use that to do some great stuff. And so you can do some really cool things with UML. This is a great thing, especially for working at spec uh, doing some brainstorming, like I said, or using it as a source to like, hey, this is what you need to make to get your project started. And so you can use this as a teacher or as a student, do some great things with it. I wanna hope you have a great time. Cheers and have a good day. See ya.